Okay, so today we're going to make this in Touch Designer. It's basically a grid of videos, um, and each pixel is basically uh, my webcam. And you can see there's a delay in certain parts of the pixels, and the de pixels that are delayed are the brightest value. So if you look down here, my hand is sort of dictating what part of this grid is playing real time and which is not. Um, this is inspired by this tutorial, so I'll link that below. So make sure to check them out. I'm basically just taking this exact model and just adding a little bit more. Okay, so let's get started. Select everything and delete it. So we have a blank canvas. The first thing we want to do is go up to the project uh, level. So press U on your keyboard. Select your project to make sure we're in a square format. I'm in 1024 by 1024. That seems to work. Press I to go in. First thing we need is a video device in. Great, we also want to make it square. Let me make sure this is in Media Foundation that works better for my camera. Change it to a fit. We want to fit this to a square, right? So we want to change this uh, resolution to whatever the parent of uh, project this is. So me.parent.width, the parent being the project housing, the container housing all of these nodes. So me.parent. Uh, the height so 1024 by 1024 great go back to fit we want to change this to fit vertical so there we go that just takes the center part of my image it's fine with me uh, let's hide those um, next let's take turn these black and white to look for a monochrome and let's get a level just to make sure we are uh, getting the image we want I might just adjust the gamma just to Increase the contrast. Cool. Um, and now we actually want to feed this um, into a texture 3D. And what this is going to do, it's going to create a cache in the GPU of the current frame as well as the 32 preceding frames. And it's going to store them in this array. It's not actually stored as a grid, it's actually stored like a stack, and we'll, that's important later. But Right now, 32 is fine. We can adjust that later. Next thing we need is actually a rectangle to start putting these this image on. So we're going to go to the SOP, look up rectangle. Uh, I'm going to add a transform immediately, uh, just because I know I'll, I'll need to change the, the rectangle later. And we're going to create a geo from this transform. So go over to the composite and geometry. And the rectangle is automatically in the geo, which is helpful. As with any geo, we need a camera. There we go. And a render, render top. So we can actually see what the geo is outputting, what the camera is outputting. And those are automatically linked. Let's create a null from this render just to set as our output. And I'm going to click this blue dot, display. There we go. So we have a rectangle. There's no light, which is why it's black. Um, but we just need to get a material on and we can use a constant which negates light so we don't need a light in the scene we want it to be perfectly flat anyways let me just move this all back um, create a constant map right there drag and drop the texture 3d and we zoom in drag and drop the texture 3d onto the constant now my texture's on this torus Drag and drop the constant mat onto the geo, bottom right here, uh, and select parm parameter material. There we go. So now my texture is on the geo, and I don't even need lighting. So now we need to make a grid. Let's create a grid stop. And this grid will act like our um, coordinates to have each, each square at. So this just looks like a cube, but if we press A and W, we can see that. It is, in fact, a grid. Um, let's make a null from this grid. Go over to our geo. Go over to the instance tab, not instance 2. Turn on instancing. Drag and drop null 2, which is from the grid, onto the default instance operator right here. Cool. And now we're going to use this grid to translate and to basically move 
the this rectangle onto each intersection of this grid. So to do that, we go to translate x, p0, translate y, position 1. And you can see we have our grid, but each rectangle is too big. So we go back to our transform. There's a uniform scale here, which I can scale down. I'm going to do 0.05, right? And I go up to my camera. This Z translate set to 5 by default. Click and hold, I can just um, bring it in a little bit. OK, good, not perfect, it's fine. Um, actually, I'm going to turn off this background thing for a bit right here, just so we can see. Uh, so now is where the actual magic starts. I'm just going to turn it back on. Um, what we need to do is actually see each grid item is in sync. We want to delay parts of the image that are brighter. So let's take our monochrome up here. It's right click. Sorry, no. Middle click. Get a null. Um, let me add a transform here just so we have a background. Set the alpha to one background on just so we can maybe see this string a little easier. Null. Okay. Uh, I'm going to change the lighting with this with the level, make it more contrast, bring the gamma up, the grays up. Uh, and then we actually want to change this, go to the common tab. Instead of outputting the resolution as used input, do fit resolution. And here we're going to take the grid, rows and columns, and copy the parameter of the row. Go over to the resolution, the uh, horizontal resolution, right click, paste reference, back to grid, go to the columns, which is set to 20 right now, uh, copy parameter level, uh, paste reference. So now if I change the grid here, say to 25 by 20, I go over here, it's 25 by 20. Um, and this looks kind of strange. We don't like that. We want it to be a little sharper, so we go to nearest pixel instead of uh, interpolating. Cool. And we want this to be square, so we'll leave it. We'll do 25 by 25. Great. Um, now let's put this into a null so we can get into our geo. So this is where the magic is. And in the geo comp, go over to instance 2 tab. Down here, down by the texture mode, change it from replace to offset. Drag and drop null 4, which is what we made, which is this low resolution thing. Drag it onto texture coordinate operator. Now I go down to the W axis and select RG or B, doesn't matter for black and white image. And that should basically do it. And what, what's that doing is that the brighter part of the image is going back to our, this is our texture 3D SOP. So if I raise my hand now, you'll see there's a delay. It's taking, the brighter part of the image is taking an indexed uh, frame further into the W depth. So the higher W, the deeper and older it is. And right now, if I click this texture 3D, it's set to 32. I can change it to 64. It'll lag and it populates. And now the last index is way, way behind. And you can see the effect is a little more exaggerated. Um, but that's basically the uh, effect is pretty easy. So if I go over to grid, I can make it now 10 by 10, uh, change the transform a little bit. Uh, one, one. Sure, something like that. Um, so now it's a super low res, but you know, kind of a cool effect. So that is it. I hope you uh, enjoyed.